Hey everybody, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming with another Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous build guide. And today I'm really proud to finally present to you my Golden Dragon build for your main character. It has gone through a couple iterations and it's taken me longer than I wanted to, but it's here. And I feel like I've got it built out really, really well. This build is going to be just insanely tanky, lots of self buffs lots of damage it's going to disrupt casters like crazy it's just a really really well synergized build as with all my builds you're going to see everything so i'm going to be showing you level 1 to 20 progression mythic progression 1 to 10 as well now in order to make my builds more accessible i've added two new things one thing that i recently added is at the beginning of each of kind of the walkthroughs i'm going to uh, sh show you access on screen to the specific Excel spreadsheet for whatever section we're on. In addition, I'm going to make sure and link the Excel spreadsheet in the description below. And obviously, if that's all you want, before you leave, I would greatly appreciate if you drop a like, subscribe, drop a comment, and let me know that you appreciate the Excel spreadsheet because that helps me a lot. And for the rest of you that like an in-depth walkthrough, make sure to kind of walk, watch the video you can use timestamps to jump to the section you want, but I will explain level by level everything that I've chosen and all the abilities. We're going to be also looking at some recommended spells that you can choose or when you have options to choose spells. And then finally, I'm going to show you equipment that I have chosen for this character that's from the end game. So I hope you guys really, really like this build. And enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed making it. And now, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the Golden Dragon build. Right at the very beginning of this, I just wanted to throw out two cool little, uh, one little Easter egg of sorts, I guess. Um, and also another, I want to answer a question that uh, individuals sometimes have asked me quite a bit uh, on my comments of my other uh, dragon video, uh, transformation video that is not mythic based. So number one, um, when you transform into a dragon, starting with mythic level eight, you can basically do it at will and as much as you want. So that's really, really key. Your raging works within this. You're going to be able to apply all your self buffs from the raging as you'll see. And the nice little Easter egg I want to point out is if you, uh, utilize the closer to he heaven mythic, uh, progression as I did, if you enable Light Halo, take a look at this. Check that out. Your dragon has a literal halo, which is pretty cool. So, um, you know, it does have an effect. It's not going to be super powerful at the end of the game, but if you want to look kind of cool with a halo, uh, talk about an, quite literally an angelic uh, dragon. There you go. You can toggle that on or off. All right, we'll go ahead and start by looking at the level 1 to 20 spreadsheet. You can kind of understand it. it's pretty straightforward. Uh, a couple key things here I want to point out. At level one, when you create your character, I recommend a stat breakdown of 16, 14, 14, 12, 8, and 18. So this is uh, 16 strength, 14 dex, 14 constitution, 12 intelligence, because we want to get an extra skill point in there. The eight wisdom is going to be fine. Don't worry, at later levels, uh, this is all going to get beefed up like crazy. And then we want to pump up that charisma as much as we can. Um, as you're going to see, as I'll explain, with the skills, you're going to be pumping up persuasion every level. You need to get uh, knowledge arcana to five, mobility to three, and then the rest is going to be dumped into perception. Race is going to be the angel kin. So that's going to be the one that has strength and charisma. We're getting the farmhand background simply for min maxing. We're going to get plus one to fortitude saves, which is kind of nice. And as far as levels, um, you're going to be seeing one level of skilled fist monk. Main reasoning for this is going to be uh, being able to use our charisma to add our um, uh, to dodge bonus. And then we're going to have two levels for paladin. Then charisma is going to apply and help us get all resists. Then we're going to start blood rager. And most of our levels are going to be blood rager. We will be getting four levels of dragon disciple. Uh, then a bunch of blood rager. And at the very end, at level 20, we get one level of fighter. Just because the final level of Blood Rager doesn't really give us anything that great, and this lets us get an extra bonus feat. The spells here, as I'll be going over, these are kind of recommended spells. Um, when it says free, these are going to be ones you're going to get automatically just from 
leveling up. Um, and a lot of these, the free ones are going to be the ones you're going to be utilizing. There are other ones that you could potentially get. There'll be more opportunities, but chances are you're mainly going to be casting these. And you may also never or not very often be even casting like the offensive ones. Mainly this build is all about self-buffing and potentially buffing other people uh, to get extremely powerful in melee. That's the big goal here. Um, Stat-wise, you're going to be bumping Charisma. The last level, it doesn't matter. The way we would set it up, this will add you on, end you on an even number or odd number rather. And that's okay because at that point you're so powerful and your stats are going to be so insane as you'll see. Uh, this is not going to matter, but you can put whatever you want there. So again, this is the spreadsheet. Again, in the description, you can find a link to it if you want to do it that way. And again, if you do enjoy that spreadsheet, please leave a like. Please drop a comment letting me know that you liked the spreadsheet. Uh, again, um, I want to make sure that people are enjoying this extra feature and it's worth the extra effort. Uh, and with that being said, we will go ahead and go into the walkthrough of these levels. And afterwards, we will move on to the mythic progression. If you're just interested in seeing the spreadsheet for that, again, feel free to click the timestamp uh, to get to the section where we will go over the mythic level spreadsheet. All right, let's go ahead and start with level one. And I do want to point out uh, when it comes to uh, starting level one, you're going to get some stat allocations. So stat allocation I recommend is 16 strength, 14 dex, 14 constitution, 12 intelligence, 8 wisdom, and 18 charisma. This is assuming you're going to be picking the angel kin Asimar uh, kind of sub archetype. Uh, for the background, the farm hand. So we get plus one fortitude save. And then uh, I'm not going to be going over it at every level, but basically every time you level, your first couple levels, your first point's going to be in persuasion. You keep that maxed out. And then before level seven, you need to get Arcana five, uh, three mobility as soon as you can, and the rest is going to be dumped in perception. Once you've maxed out five Arcana, three mobility, later on you'll be sometimes having three or four skill points depending on the level and so you're going to be able to always get a point in persuasion always a point in perception and then finally you can go ahead and depending on what you want you can kind of max out mobility or max out arcana depending on what your group needs uh in my build i max out mobility but again if you don't have anybody else with knowledge arcana you can make this character specialize in that as well now level one we do go into scaled the monk skilled fist. Uh, we do pick up crane style. So it's going to give you minus two penalty on attack rolls for fighting defensively. You will always fight defensively. This is going to give you a massive amount of dodge bonus. So normally it's a minus four penalty, uh, but here it's going to be minus two. Also, as soon as you get mobility three, so three ranks in mobility, which should be around level three, you're going to get an extra two AC from this which is going to give you a uh, plus three dodge bonus. And later, late in the game, you're also going to pick up a very special feat that you'll see as part of the mythic progression that give you another two. So basically, in defensive stance, you're going to get plus five dodge bonus that does stack of all other dodge bonuses, which is really nice. Now, just let you know, Flurry of Blows, you're not going to really utilize. Um, you are going to, at low levels, Probably going to be using like a two-handed weapon, something for high DPS, maybe sword and shield, until high levels when you transform. And at that point, you're going to be using natural attacks, and Flurry of Blows does not go over that. So that is not the main concern here. Uh, the other bonus that we are getting is the AC bonus. So when unarmored and unencumbered, you get your Charisma bonus to AC and CMD. And this increases as you level up. So this is going to be quite good. Now, I want to point out early levels, you're more likely to actually wear uh, armor. So as soon as you get a couple levels in Paladin, you may choose to wear plate armor because it's going to be better. Eventually, once you get mage armor and that starts getting buffed up, you're going to swap over to taking advantage of this. So we're picking this up uh, initially, but depending on what gear you get when you're leveling up, do check it out and try equipping the armor versus unequipping it. Um, and see what's going to give you the best AC, especially once you can start casting Mage Armor on yourself. So just as you level up and get gear, until you get high level, 
when it's going to be definitely be the best to use mage armor uh just go along go with the flow and pick whatever is the strongest now i also want to point out this does require you to be lawful good uh the reason i say lawful good is because we're going to be picking up uh paladin which requires lawful good a little spoiler for endgame when you turn into a golden dragon it will turn your alignment into neutral good now for whatever reason though fortunately normally when you would change that alignment if you forced it yourself you would lose all of your paladin powers and you would lose all your monk powers because you're no longer lawful in this case and in paladin you won't be lawful good but again it doesn't work like this because of that shift you're allowed to keep these powers so but do note that when you're starting you do need to be lawful good and then the final element that you're also getting here is you are getting uh, a feat and we're going to choose dodge at level one okay at level two you're going to get your first of two levels of paladin and so the point here is that you are basically just prepping yourself for the next level um we have the alignment restrictions as i explained you are not going to be really using smite evil based on the way you're going to be leveling up uh, but this is a prerequisite and at level four we're going to go ahead and pick up a second level in paladin and here's the main thing you're going to get you will get lay on hands and this will scale because of your charisma but this is a nice little swift way of getting extra heals on you but we're here for the divine grace you're going to be getting bonus equal to your charisma modifier on all your saving throws and eventually this is going to be like plus eight or more so um this is going to be like plus eight to all your resist rolls is insane all your saves rather so uh this is really really big you're also going to be picking up intimidating prowess this is a precursor to what couple uh feats later on but whenever you intimidate you're going to uh, add your strength modifier in in addition to your charisma modifier to your persuasion checks now this intimidation is both in potential conversations but more importantly for this build it's in combat um, you're going to get a, a nice little debuff you're going to automatically apply to people now at level four you're going to get your first level of blood rager we are going to put when it comes to your stat point a point in charisma you're going to be when it comes to your bloodline you're going to pick the arcane bloodline and that's going to uh give you some nice bonuses um as we go on and right off the bat you're going to make life hell on enemy casters disrupting their concentration checks but that's not the main reason you'll see as we level up this is going to make our blood raging just so much more potent uh we're also going to get fast movement an extra 10 movement is kind of nice you're going to be especially when you're not wearing armor later on you're going to be zipping around the field like crazy at level five we're going to take another level of blood rager we are going to get a the uncanny dodge feat, feat uh well for free basically and this is really nice again to kind of help protect yourself and as far as our main um feat that we're going to unlock it's going to be iron will it's going to be plus two bonus on all will saving throws uh kind of a spoiler mini spoiler for this game there are going to be some very very important will saves as you go on in this game that will have a dramatic impact on the game so i will say on top of just not losing control of your character because of missing a will will save story-wise this is the save that is going to be the most important by far so we want to get this nice and high now at level six we're going to get another level of blood rager we're going to get blood sanctuary which is a nice little bonus and this is going to set us up uh, and ready to go into dragon disciple now speaking of dragon disciple at level seven we're going to finally pick up dragon disciple we are going to get a feat which is going to be lightning reflexes so now this is going to give you plus two bonus save on all reflex saving throws this is nice for kind of getting out of the way of aoe attacks taking like half damage or quarter damage whatever it may be um also it, you're going to pick the draconic gold uh bloodline now by this point you will definitely have your mythic path unlocked and you will have unlocked your first mythical kind of ability that will allow you to get a second bloodline that will be discussed in the mythic path uh, but do know that is important for you to get so that you can pick the golden draconic bloodline for this you get some benefits from it and what's nice is at that first level you're already going to get a natural armor increase 
and this will stack with all of the other natural armor factors out in the game, which is really, really nice. At level eight, we're gonna take another level, second level of Dragon Disciple. And you're gonna get a first a first set of kind of bonus uh, bonus mods uh, or feats rather. And for whatever reason, I don't know why they're not shown on this class bio at all. But I made a note to mention it to you, and it lets you pick power attack, which is what you're gonna want to get. Uh, this is why we're not getting it earlier either. There's only a finite amount of these, and if you take power attack earlier, you're gonna literally run out of good bonus feats to get and you're gonna waste feats later in the game this is why we wait on that this at this level we're also gonna pump another point to charisma and you're also gonna get your first spell option and I prefer a large person this is nice because if you're gonna be using a two-handed weapon uh, it's gonna give you a size bonus that will give you reach on your weapon so you don't have to be frontline you can be actually like right behind your tank and hit kind of over them which is really, really nice. And also it's going to increase the damage that your weapon does. And then as far as nice benefits here, you're going to get a dragon bite, that uh, natural attack. But the main thing we like here is you get your first ability boost and you're going to get plus to the strength, which is nice. So you're going to be already pumped to 18. Next at level nine, we're taking the third level of dragon disciple. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, you're going to get mage armor for free as, as a spell. I want to point that out because this is the first level you may potentially not wear armor depending on what armor you have to give this character so once you have your mage armor on that's four ac and then don't forget you're going to be getting bonuses from dex as well as charisma so this may be better uh, than the armor you have again in my playthrough depending on what was getting there were times where i had mage armor and then i'd swap to real armor for a bit i went back and forth a couple of times on this so uh, you're gonna your you know your results may vary. Now you're gonna get a feat, and the feat that you're gonna pick is going to be Carnugen Smash for yeah Carnugen Smash. And so as long as you're hitting with power attack, which yes we are uh, all the time, you can make an immediate persuasion intimidate check as a free action attempt to demoralize your opponent. This will happen automatically as long as you are you have power attack enabled. And what Demoralize does is it makes the enemy have a minus two attack uh, for a round. And this can get refreshed constantly. This is important because it's not only against you, but other people. It's the equivalent of having an extra two AC. So that is really, really quite good for that element. And you're also going to get another bonus feat. And again, unfortunately, it's not showing it on here. I don't know why. Uh, but it, you're going to pick Great Fortitude. And this is going to give you plus two, finally, to your Fortitude saves. So this is the the final the save type uh, that we kind of uh, we get. So now you will have plus two two to all of them. Now at level ten you're going to get the fourth and final level of Dragon Disciple. Now the reason for this is because we want to get very specific synergies later on, um, and this is the last level where you get some what I'd say like kind of the best bonuses that aren't going to be given to you later by other methods. So you're going to get one more extra uh, natural armor that again stacks. So you get two armor here and an extra two strength. So now you are a 20 strength. And you're also going to get the spell shield for free that you can cast on yourself. That's an extra two AC. It stacks with all the other buffs. So this is another uh, self buff. So basically mage armor and this shield uh, can stack. Also, if you're not using mage armor, use normal armor. Shield will stack with it. So it's a great little... Uh, self buff that you can have starting this level. All right, at level 11, we're going back to Blood Red Journey. We're going to be here for a while. So, at this level, the biggest thing that you're going to get here is you're going to pick up a normal mod called uh, or feat. It's called Persuasive. It's a buff to persuasion and perception skills. Those are both things you're going to get. And because you are level 11, you will already have 11 ranks in both of these. So this feat will immediately give, you, immediately give you plus four to each of those. Again, persuasion is really powerful for conversations and, your, uh, and also for the intimidation and perception is great for finding magic items and traps, etc. And when it comes to spells, you're going to want to pick up Mirror's Image. So that's a spell that basically casts multiple duplicates of yourself. And when enemies attack you, they are likely to hit those images if, in case instead of you. So it's like extra like AC 
it's an ACO shit button. So if they were to hit you, there's a chance uh, multiple times that are going to hit the mirror, mirror image instead. So it's a nice little fail safe and also build strength. So in case you don't have like a belt that gives you strength yet, this will give you plus four strength. And so that's uh, a nice way to boost your damage and to hit as well at this level. At level 12, we're going to Blood Rager again. Uh, and what's nice is we're going to get improved Uncanny Dodge. You can't be flanked now. So now it's just like you can be one man army. You can be totally surrounded and you're going to be fine. Uh, you're going to put one point into Charisma. The feat that we're going to pick up is going to be Blind Fight. Now the stat you're going to pick up is going to be Charisma. And you're going to get a bonus feat again. That's not shown here, but it's going to be Blind Fight. And with Blind Fight, it's kind of nice. Uh, when you're dealing with enemies that have concealment, um, they're not going to have, in short, they're not going to have as many benefits for, against the, the you, and it's not going to be quite as tough on you to hit. So it's a nice little bonus feat to have. Uh, if this was a normal feat, I probably wouldn't pick it up, but because it is on a bonus list, uh, we do uh, pick it up. Now, as far as spells go, I like picking up Eagle Splendor. It's going to buff your charisma. Again, if you don't have a headpiece that has plus charisma on it, or it's less than two, or you have another headpiece you want to put on temporarily. This is a nice way to buff your charisma. Protection from arrows is not bad. It lasts, you know, uh, hours. So one hour per level. So it's a nice way to uh, uh, defend you against range attacks, especially since, you know, you don't have a shield, etc. And then resist energy. You get that for free. So during the mid-levels, this can be still situationally useful during harder fights. You know what kind of uh, attacks are going to be coming at you all right level 13 and we pick up another level of blood rager uh the main feat we're going to pick up is improved iron will plus the bonus on will saving throws as we've discussed before this is a big deal uh it's the most important save in the game you're also going to get a bonus feat called disruptive and again you're just making it difficult on casters that are trying to cast defensive in the area it just makes it that more likely that they're going to miscast so uh, quite literally, you're being disruptive. All right, level 14. Um, you're going to take another level of Blood Rage. This is level 7 of Blood Rage. You're going to start getting damage reduction. Um, you're going to get a bonus spell, Magic Missile. Uh, but really, the biggest thing that you're going to be getting at this level is the access to level 3 spells. Uh, the ones I recommend are Haste. You're going to be able to self-haste yourself potentially soon. Uh, but uh, it, that's just a great group spell. Fireball because you get extra damage to fire damage, and again, you get magic missile for free. Now, level 15 is really, really big uh, for this character. This is level 8 of Blood Rager because the biggest thing you're going to get here is Greater Arcane Blood Rage. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, I should have. It's not quite as impactful, but earlier on at level 4 of uh, Blood Rager, you're going to get Arcane Blood Rage. So basically, when you initiate Blood Rage, you're going to have a separate button and it's a little open up menu and you can click to either get blur protection from arrows or resist energy and you choose the energy type so literally you can like pause the game blood rage immediately as a free action click one of those and it's going to put it on you but while that's good the amazing one at this level is that you get to choose from self haste or you're, uh, sorry, self-haste, or you're going to get to do displacement. Basically makes you like, it's a 50% chance for enemies to miss you. So it's like, it's very, very powerful. Uh, a lot of times when I'm kind of lazy on smaller fights, I'll just self-haste myself. But if it's a tougher fight, what I'll do is I'm going to cast displacement on myself and then either self-cast haste on me or have another character uh, haste me and, and the rest of the group. So I get the best of both worlds. But this, is, uh, this can be utilized as many times, and it's active as long as you're raging. And you will, by this time, already have infinite blood raging because of your mythic path pro uh, progression that you're going to see uh, later in the video. So this is just an amazing boost. And it's the main reason why we pick our Arcane Bloodline as our primary bloodline. But we're not even done yet. So we're also going to get a feat and a bonus feat. So the feat we're going to get is Outflank. Um, and so this is a teamwork feat. Other people have to have this or pets, etc. And it's just going to give you when you're flanking, which is basically you're just next to uh, one of your allies when they're next to 
um, an enemy, and you'll get plus four to attack instead of plus two. Uh, and when you score a critical hit against the flank creature, you provoke an attack of opportunity from your ally. So this is basically my favorite teamwork feat to put on as many things as possible. Again, because there are so many other feats I like to get first for defensive reasons. For example, I, I wait later to get this, but you can always get it earlier. You're also going to get a bonus feat. And again, it doesn't show it here on the interface. But it's going to be improved initiative that I want to pick at this point. That's a plus four to your initiative score. That's how soon you go in a turn order. So in turn-based mode, you're going to notice this a lot. In real time, you may not notice it, but it does matter. And it kind of tells you when, let's say you want to initiate an attack or a charge. It tells you when you start. So if you're first initiative, uh, on on the uh, kind of rankings, your charge will probably be like a zero second cast. If you're last, you may have to have enough full six seconds before it goes off. So it does play a role. You do get new spell as uh, aspect or access to new spells. Nothing that special. I kind of recommend greater animal aspect. Um, and you can choose the one that gives you like plus 30 movement, which makes you super, super fast, especially while hasted. You like Speedy Gonzalez, but you can pick whatever you want at this point. At level 16, you're going to get another level of Bread Rager. Uh, you're going to get a stat point in Charisma. You're going to get a bonus feat. Again, that's shown, which is Combat Reflexes, which makes it that you can take as many opportunity attacks as, as you, basically as you have dex modifiers instead of just one. So, again, it's mainly being chosen because it's one of the last useful feats on the bonus list that we have. Not that it's like that amazing for this build, but uh, at higher levels, it will proc quite a bit if you're like fearing people or they're running away or trying to get past you to get to your squishier characters, um, especially since you're gonna be such a giant dragon later on. Uh, this, is, uh, this will come in handy. And as far as spells, protection from alignment could be situationally useful here. Again, we're at a point with some of these spells that you're gonna be getting. Uh, they're excessive, you're, you're not gonna, you're gonna be able to pick a lot more spells that, that you'll use. Um, we're probably going to stick to those primary spells that we've chosen so far. All right, level 17 of uh, picking another level of Blood Rager, you're going to get that extra damage reduction again. Doesn't scale that well, unfortunately. You're going to get a bonus spell Invisibility, which is, you know, it's nice. I, I don't really ever use it. I mean, you're the front line tank guy. You don't need to be hiding or anything like that, but you do get it. Now for defeat, we're gonna get improved critical claw. And this is important because it's going to help you get the most out of your dragon form DPS as you will have multiple claw attacks in dragon form. You'll be getting that dragon form around this level. Um, so it's either gonna be right before or right after you get it, depending on how fast you're going through the game. But this is a, a great one to set you up for some of the buffs you're gonna be getting in your mythic line. Now, as far as spells go, you're going to get a large person mass. And this can be useful, again, if you have multiple melee characters in the group. Getting them larger while they hurt their AC a little bit into hit, it will increase the scale of their weapon's damage. And again, give, provide weapons with kind of reach because the weapons are going to be bigger. So there tends to be a, a bit of a, uh, a clogging effect when you have a lot of melee characters. And if you do make them all large, what it's going to do is make it so that more of them are going to be able to hit enemies more easily. It's a lot of time. It's a good trade-off. And controlled fireball is great because you're going to be able to basically shoot it into a group uh, of your own characters. And it's not going to damage them. It's only going to damage the enemy. So that's really, really good if you happen to use you know, the fireball spell. All right, level 18, you're going to get level 11 of Blood Rager. Almost done here. Uh, it's going to give you the greater blood rage, so a more powerful version. Now, notice in the description it says that at this level, when you enter blood rage, you can cast a blood rage spell of second level or lower as a swift action. Now, I think this is because of the special arcane bloodline feature, uh, but this gets overridden. So, unfortunately, you do not get this on top of the other free casts. The difference is, uh, and the benefit is that. The ones we have, the Greater Arcane Blood Rage, it doesn't use a spell uh, slot to cast it. You can cast it infinite amounts of times. This would actually use spell slots. So, you know, the trade-off is what it is, uh, but I think it's perfectly fine. 
you still get the improvements to the damage and will saves though. And then you're going to get a bonus feat, and it's the final useful bonus feat, I, I believe. And that's going to be toughness. It's just going to help you get a little extra hit points. You're going to have a ton of hit points. You can probably see here at level 20, even without gear on this setup. Um, I have, you know, 468 hit points. Um, and this is going to be uh, more with the gear you're going to equip at high levels. So the, you know, 20-some hit points this adds isn't anything great, but it's better than the alternative option. All right, level 19, we pick up our final level of Blood Rager. And the reason we went all the way to level 19 is because I do like Caster Scourge. So this is kind of nice. Uh, all enemy casters within 10 feet of you have to make a concentration check. Uh, when they cast the spell, difficulty 15 plus double spell level. And this ability, it's, it's a constant ability of all the time. It's not always going to work. They're going to pass it a lot, but it's free. And it, when it works and it saves you from getting cast on, it's nice. And it makes it uh, worthwhile uh, when it comes to holding on to this. Also, you're going to get another bonus feat of combat casting. Um, you're not going to, most of your buffs are going to be pre-buffs. So you're not going to be casting in combat very often. But let's say for whatever reason you're in the middle of combat and you want to cast that control fireball on a group. Uh, this will help you not get interrupted. Again, we're picking it because it's an option that is the best of the choices that are left over. And then you do get fear for free, but again, you're unlikely to use it very often. All right, and in 20th level, we're going to actually pick up a level in fighter. On top of having full bab, we're also going to get an extra uh, bonus uh, feat. And so I just chose weapon focus claw. So all your claws attacks get a plus one bonus. And that is helpful. You can literally pick whatever you want here. This is optional. If for whatever reason you felt like getting that final level in Blood Rager, go ahead. Uh, that's personal preference. You're already going to be so powerful. This is like literally, literally a minor cherry on top for the final choice. So those are all the normal levels. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the mythic level progression. Now it's very, very important. I'm going to note here when you first level up, you're going to level up as an angel, and you're going to notice on this um, ascension line, uh, temp for temporary. Because as soon as you get Golden Dragon at level 8, um, all the other ones go away. All these Ascension ones, except for Close to Heaven. You're not going to have Everlasting Flame, Solar Winds, Grand Blessing, Unfailing uh, Beacon, uh, anything like that. You're still going to get all your Mythic Feats and Mythic Abilities. But you're now basically converting at level 8 to Gold Dragon. Now, for those of, that, those of you that don't know... You need to make sure, in order to unlock the Golden Dragon, there's plenty of videos on it, but in short form, if you remember at the very beginning, there's a dragon that gets killed, and you pick up her scale, and there's like a little quest line related to it. Well, you need to complete that quest line, and then there's going to be a request, and there's going to be a second quest in Act 3, where you're basically going to go look for another kind of artifact or item uh, that, is, uh, that was owned by this dragon complete that quest make sure you're good make sure you're merciful the choice when you run into the the bahamut um, um a follower if you are brutal and evil uh it will lock this out but at that point you've done everything you need to do and then when you get back to dresden from the abyss you won't be able to miss this you will have an opportunity when you hit mythic level eight not before it will give you an option to either stay with the angelic path, as we'll see here. You can go uh, basically legendary by going human mode, or you can go into golden dragon. And if you choose golden dragon, that's how you get this. All of these right here, they're going to disappear, but you're going to get the first gold dragon transformation. And we'll discuss those buffs um, when we look at the actual um, leveling process in just a moment. Um, Outside of that, everything's pretty straightforward here, and I'll explain what each and every one does as we go through the details. Again, a copy of this spreadsheet is in the description below. If you are utilizing that, make sure to like, uh, drop me a comment, let me know that you are uh, utilizing the spreadsheet and it's helpful. If you have any comments or recommendations for it in the future, do let me know. I'll do my best to adapt it if you guys give me some good ideas. And uh, that being said, let's go ahead and take a look one by one at this progression and what each one of these feats, abilities do. 
All right, so now we're looking at the mythic level progression. Now, again, this is for the golden dragon. Uh, you are going to be having additional, as you're leveling up, angelic options. You can see in this spreadsheet that I mentioned moments ago, the options I recommend. Um, you can pick basically any one that you want. They're all about buffing up your halo and your sword. I picked the ones I liked. But in the long term, they're all going to go away. So they're all, they, all, they are all temporary choices. The remainder of this that we're going over is not temporary. And do note, we have them in a very specific order because we need to make sure certain things are unlocked in a very specific pattern. You are unlocking Mythic Pact progression that is not based on EXP. It is based on story progression. So there's going to be a very linear progression when this unlocks as opposed to your leveling. And if you do a bunch of side content, it's very possible your no normal leveling will outpace some of this. I did my best to check and pick options that you are unlikely to out level. All right, so level one, when you pick Mythic Hero, you're gonna get bypass epic damage reduction automatically. We're gonna choose closer to heaven and it's gonna give you this nice little nuke. It's either a, it's a ranged attack that scales or ranged heal. It's not bad and you're also gonna get some Acid, cold, uh, resistances, and immunity petrification, which is going to be nice. And you're going to get a mythic ability, and that mythic ability is going to be to get an extra bloodline. And you're going to pick Draconic Gold. So the gold is obviously in anticipation of being a gold dragon. But in addition to this, this is going to make sure that you can get the Dragon Disciple feat uh, or uh, selection at level 7. So you should before or at level seven, uh, be also unlocking uh, your mythic progression. So this should happen about the same time. All right, at level two of the mythic uh, ranks, uh, you're gonna get your summons paladins, you're gonna get your improvements of heaven's breath, uh, and also hard to kill. But you're gonna actually, uh, under the mythic feats, you're gonna pick extra mythic ability, and you're gonna pick up limitless rage. This is important because we want to be able to rage as much as you can. Do note, you still have to deal with that winded state when you exit uh, your blood rage. So if you're going quickly between fight to fight, do be careful. Uh, if you don't wait long enough, you may be winded and may not be able to rage right away. So keep that in mind. At level three, we're going to get thundering blows. This is going to be uh, good while you level up, but it's going to be insane when you're dragon form at high levels. You're going to have so many attacks. Some of them are about to miss. And you're just going to be proccing massive AoE damage on top of your normal damage. At Mythic level 4, we're going to get Power Attack Mythic. And again, we do not want to get this earlier because we are getting Mythic uh, or Power Attack a little later than normal. So, you know, some people like to get this like on level 1 for whatever reason. Uh, I like to wait off on this a little bit later. It's just going to make your Power Attack more powerful. And since it's going to be permanently on, it's going to be a nice buff. Mythic level 5 is when you are probably going to finally get rid of wearing armor permanently, most likely. So basically, it's going to increase your mage armor uh, by an additional bonus equal to your mythic rank. So eventually, at mythic rank 10, this is going to give you 10 extra AC. So your mage armor is going to give you 14 AC, which is more than any just about any armor out there. And don't forget, this will also qualify you to get your full dex bonus to AC and your uh, charisma bonus to AC, so it's going to be so insane for AC starting with this level. Mythic level 6, you're going to be getting Iron Will Mythic. As I've discussed multiple times, a will saves are going to be crucial to survival, but also to story elements. And so being able to roll twice and keep the best one is going to be key. Around this rank is when they start to really kick in. You're probably in the abyss by this point. And so this is going to uh, come up a lot and in a very critical way. So definitely pick this up at 6. And Mythic Level 7, we are getting ready to go Dragon Mode. Remember, well, you're going to get Dragon Form at Mythic Level 8. And in case you didn't know, Master Shapeshifter does apply to all Polymorph effects, including Dragon. So this is going to adjust all your stats to physical ability scores by an additional plus 4. So constitution, strength, and dexterity, 
Um, it's huge. You're already going to be able to infinitely transform so the other element doesn't matter, but this is just going to make your transformation even more powerful. And finally, we have the glorious mythic level 8. When we turn into a dragon, we get a dragon breath that is way better than the dragon breath we have normally in the game. So you will have, as you level up, a dragon breath that I don't think I even used once. This is amazing. It does a ton of damage. It's a huge cone. Um, it debuffs enemies. And you can use it basically infinitely. And every time it uses, you use it, the system does a roll. And it's going to be between one and four rounds before you can use it again. You can spam the bejesus out of this if you want to. It looks really cool. Actually, I'll show it to you right now. So let's take a quick look at it. Check out this beast mode. Boom. There you go. And again, you can use that as much as you want every four rounds or less. Now, you may wonder what happens when you're a dragon. Well, you're immune to poison, disease, fear, confusion, paralysis, and sleep. You get resistance to all energy equal to your character level plus half your mythic rank. So if you think about it, baseline, if you were like max level and mythic level 10, that's going to be 25 resistance all. Now, if any of your saving throws before modifier is less than 5 plus your mythic rank, it won't be because, again, you've got those talent abilities. You're going to have huge uh, saves. But if any of your attributes before modifier is less than 14, you get a bonus up to that number. Uh, yes, please. So guess what? Uh, that 8 in wi uh, wisdom, nope. That is now uh, going to be a 14. Same with your intelligence. Uh, for example, uh, all the other ones are going to be 14 or higher. Your hit dice are now D12. This is how I have this massive amount of health. This is, you know, you basically have barbarian hit dice. It's nuts. Now, any spells, offensive spells, because you do have offensive spells. And remember, as a gold dragon, you get extra damage to uh, fire spells. Uh, but now their dice are D6 if they're not D6 or greater. And if they are D6, you're going to get an extra bonus to it. And all your weapons count as plus five weapons. So by this time, you already probably have plus five weapons. But it's a nice safety net in case you don't. Uh, now, again, in our particular case for our build, we're going to be using natural weapons. So they'll be plus five equivalent, uh, I believe. So, um, so that's nice as well. And if you thought that was nuts, Mythic Level 9 is ridiculous, plus one. So first of all, uh, you're, you are became immune to mind-affecting effects now. You get spell resistance to 15 plus your character level and half your Mythic rank. So now, yeah. You're talking about 35 plus half, so it's like 40 uh, resistances. Your base attack bonus, if it's less than 15 plus mythic rank, you get a bonus up to that number. So remember, let's say we bump this up to level 10, uh, that means 25 basic attack bonus. Your maximum base attack bonus, if you're a fighter at level 20, is 20. You're going to be above, even if you were a caster. Now remember, we're kind of a kind of a hybrid, but uh, they all have good babs. Uh, so for us, this is still going to bump us to 25. Uh, but as a side note, you could have been like a pure caster if you really wanted to and kind of dredged your way through. And then this would bump you up to like a melee beast. Uh, but that's a port note. And also importantly, if any of your attributes before modifier is less than 18, uh, you get a bonus up to that. So remember, we only started out with 18 constitution. Everything else... Our natural stats were 16 or less. But guess what? All those get bumped to 18. And then we get all the modifiers that we uh, get from armor, buffs, etc. So this is why our stats are going to be ultra, extremely bonkers. And when I show you my geared out character, you are going to, uh, it's, it's going to be awesome and awe inspiring. And then finally, uh, spells that deal damage now change your dice to D8s. So a lot of them you'll notice are D6s. So this is going to bump up that damage. If they're already D8s or greater, you're going to get a plus one bonus to damage per die, which is not bad. And then we get to some nutty, nutty stuff. So we get the actual Golden Dragon transformation at level nine. So even though we had kind of passive elements, like background stuff that made us dragon form, now we can transform and you gain the following abilities, a plus 10 size bonus to strength. So this stacks of enhancement bonuses which are like your belts uh or or spells for example so this is amazing you get a plus eight bonus to constitution plus eight 
form natural armor bonus. Notice it says form. So this will stack with like an amulet of natural armor. It will stack with the natural armor buff that you've also received from leveling up as a dragon disciple. So normally natural armor doesn't stack, but these do. So this is going to make your uh, armor uh, bonus insane. You're going to get blind sense 60 and then your attacks. You get one bite at 2d8, which is bonkers. Two claw attacks, 2d6. Two wing attacks, 1d8. And one tail slap, 2d6. Remember those two claw attacks, you're going to get improved criticals on them and some other nutty stuff uh, based off the other buffs we're going to see here in a second. And then you're going to get three dragon feats. And what's insane about this is it's any feat in the game and you do not need to make any prerequisites. You could get basically like abilities that are uh, race specific. You could get a Kitsune tail ability if you wanted to. I haven't tested it all, but what I picked up is the first one that I picked up was Bestial Totem Greater. And what this does is it basically uh, lets you at the end of a charge do a full attack. So those of you that don't know, when you charge, you don't mean just get one standard attack. It's one of the downsides to um, charging. But now you get to do your full attack. So in dragon form, that's that bite, those claw attacks, the wing attacks, the tail slap, all of that. Also, your claws deal three times damage on a critical hit instead of two. Um, so that's just, it's, it's absolutely going to be bonkers. Really, really, really nice buff. And again, normally you would have to get Lesser Beast or Totem and Beast Totem and Greater Beast Totem as a Barbarian to get this. Nope, we're just going to pick this up automatically for free. Next, we're going to pick up something a little less exciting, but it's still really good. Uh, Cautious Fighter, when fighting defensively, which again, you're going to be doing all the time, um, your dodge bonus to AC is increased by an extra two. I mentioned this during a level up portion. So when you're fighting defensively, you're going to have, I believe, a plus five to AC that stacks with all the other ACs. This is what's going to get your ACs so darn high. And least, last but not least, we have Dreadful Carnage. So slaying enemies demoralizes your nearby foes. So whenever you reduce an enemy, enemy to zero or fewer hit points, so remember, zero is knocked out. That's even before they die. You can make a persuasion, which you will automatically, to intimidate check to demoralize all enemies within 30 feet as a free action. This is basically an AoE demoralize. So it's like your, your, your smash ability from earlier levels. But AoE, don't forget, your persuasion stat is going to be nuts. Because you're getting that massive charisma bonus, massive strength bonus, all the skill points, your persuasion feed from earlier on. This is going to be procking all over the place. You are just literally going to be scaring the living shit out of all your enemies, including demons. It's going to be phenomenal. Final little thing, uh, level 9, I forgot to mention, you do get, all your skills become class skills. Again, you don't have that many skill points innately, so you weren't buffing up a lot of them. Uh, but all of them will go baseline to Mythic Rank 9 here. It'll be Mythic Rank 10. So in all those other skill areas, you'll be decent in them. Uh, but again, it's not really worth mentioning because uh, you need to have kind of min-max skill points for them to be effective in late game. But it is an extra feature. I forgot to motion, I mentioned a moment ago. And then finally, at level 10 Mythic, uh, there's only one thing, but it's important. You become immune to cold damage, fire damage, electricity and acid damage, energy drain, and negative energy. And all your damage is now holy, which is very hard, if not impossible, to resist. And then finally, any spells you deal, deal damage now. Change your dice to D10. If they weren't D10 or greater, and if it was D10, you would get uh, plus one bonus damage per die. So you this you may be casting those crazy fireballs or whatever you want at this point. You can you can cast and blow everything up, but you might as well just run in and absolutely murder everything. Uh, as you you saw in the little footage at the beginning, you are just a killer death machine. And I want to provide you guys with a special note about spells. You may have noticed that as we were leveling up, I mentioned the spells that you're going to be getting from your Blood Rager spellbook, um, some of the ones that I recommended. But I didn't really go over recommendations on your basically angel spellbook. Those you basically get to pick and choose. You get access to all of them as, as you level up. But 
by the time you get to this gold dragon build you lose all your angel levels so you do lose access to all those spells they are great they are phenomenal if you were to stick with angel path awesome but you're not going to be using them but honestly you will not need them so did want to put that note out in case somebody was asking me about spells again uh, you're going to have very limited spells um for the uh, blood rager side but you will find all the ones that i recommend uh in the leveling up portion and also in the spreadsheet those are the ones that you're likely to uh utilize all right guys so i wanted to kind of show you uh once you're engaged in combat once your um basically your blood rage is going what my level 20 dragon looks like i want to point out and you may have noticed this for my leveling up video i actually had to create a new character and kind of artificially get him leveled up because my main character, this character, um, I messed up on a couple of things as I leveled up. I kind of learned that I should have made certain choices, like which skills to focus on, a couple suboptimal feats. Um, it doesn't like break the build, but it's not min maxed. So the other part of the video shows you what to get going, but obviously I don't have the gear on that or anything like that. Here I'm going to be sharing with you the gear. And also kind of stats that you can see at level 20. The gear can be improved. I do, again, want to emphasize you turn neutral good when you turn into a dragon. But you still get to get all the cool paladin and monk buffs. Uh, as you can see, insane stats when it comes to strength, dexterity, constitution, uh, charisma, and so forth. Let's take a look at a, a couple key things. Um, your attacks, uh, plus 35 base attack bonuses, basically. Uh, your... Your damages with your claws are 2d6 plus 49. Uh, don't forget, you, this isn't like the best at showing it because you're going to have, you know, two claw attacks. You're going to have a bite attack, uh, wing attacks. Uh, you're going to have uh, uh, the attacks of your tail as well. Uh, but obviously just the damage is potential is bonkers. Now, your armor class. Look at this armor class. 69 armor class. And take a look at everything that stacks. This is the, why we uh, built up their ways we did. The AC bonus from Monk, plus 8. Those lucky bracers that we'll look at in a second that you get right away. We keep those around. It stacks. Dex bonus. Deflection bonus from the ring. Our mage armor is plus 14. Plus 4 from shield. Take a look at all that crazy amount of um, natural armor stacking. From dragon resistances, natural armor increase. Uh, from gear, a lot of dodge bonuses from haste. Uh, fighting defensively is plus six, actually. I think I mentioned plus five, but it's plus six. And also plus eight from dragon, natural dragon form. Our re resistances are insane as well. Fortitude save is 43, 39 on reflex, 40 on will. And our land speed is 70. So 40 from fast movement and 30 from haste. You're zipping around like crazy. Again, don't mind these skills here because they're not min-maxed, but I wanted to show you that. Now, let's take a look at equipment. Um, also, you may notice the character portrait. So when you hit Mythic Dragon uh, level 8, basically when you unlock it, the game gives you a choice to keep your natural portrait or this dragon portrait. Obviously, this uh, dragon portrait is amazing, so we're going to choose that. Uh, now, as far as gear... What you're going to want for your head is basically, I have a headband of a learning charisma, plus four. I know you can get plus six. I just haven't had it. I haven't gotten on this character yet. Uh, but uh, So that's pretty nice. Um, I haven't picked anything in particular for goggles, but I know there are goggles that will help with like uh, perception and, and so forth. So you can get that if you'd like. Uh, for the cloak, cloak of resistance plus five. Can't go wrong with that. For the rings, uh, definitely a ring of protection plus four. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a plus five. If there is, obviously get that. I chose Ring of Guiding Star for my other ring. Plus four to initiative, so you're going really quickly. And whenever you uh, land hits against undead enemies, and remember, you're going to be charging in, getting first hits. It's going to grant your, all your companions plus three bonus damage on for one round. So that's a nice little bonus. You could go defensive, but you're probably not going to need it. Uh, the Bracers, I just end up kept using... Uh, Engrave Lucky Bracers. Does this AC bonus and resist bonus is stacked with everything else. So I didn't replace anything, but if you find something useful, you can. 
Uh, this amulet, it is a quest reward uh, from the Abyss. It is amazing. Plus five natural armor enhancement. And it gives you plus two bonus to your highest current ability score. So for me, I believe it was ended up being strength. But again, this, this will adapt to whatever class you have. But this is really, really good. Uh, definitely Google this if you want to get it. Uh, you have to uh, play a very specific way in the Abyss to get it. Uh, no armor. Because again, we're getting such a massive amount of armor from not wearing armor, mage armor, uh, and the special factors from the monk class that will give us extra AC. Again, we have eight charisma, so that's basically our eight plus eight to charisma. That's an extra AC, eight AC. So from this and from our uh, mage armor, we're getting 22 AC. There is no armor in a game that gives you 22 AC, and again, has no negative effects. Um, <laughs> for a shirt, ironically, I got, I'm still wearing On the Brink of Death. I'm sure there's something better. Uh, this is kind of gives you an additional uh, little offense if you're low on health. You will never drop to below 50 health. You're going to be so godly. But I have it there. It's almost like a joke. Uh, belt of Physical Perfection is perfect. So plus four to all stats. I thought there was a plus six. Maybe I just haven't gotten it. But you want to max out Strength, Dex, and Con. This is perfect for it. I got Boots of Free Reign, so this uh, gives you a permanent effect of Freedom of Movement spell. So basically, you can never be slowed or limited in any movement. So this, these are great boots I got in an early mid-game and just slapped them on and never took them off. So there's the equipment. Those are the stats. There's everything you need. Uh, again, absolutely bonkers. All right, guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this build. Um, if you did, remember, like, subscribe, smash that notification bell and let me know in the description what kind of mythic build outs you'd like for me to make in the future i will be making both companion builds as i have been do make sure to check those out but i'll also be making kind of thematic uh builds for the main character especially ones that lean into the mythic paths to make him uh min max but also kind of cool and fun so looking forward to making those for you and i most definitely appreciate your feedback I do listen to it. I try and respond as much as I can um, and make stuff that you guys ask for. All right, guys. That being said, thank you so very much. And I will see you guys in the next video.